In part one, I highlighted a couple of periods in Earth's history that illustrated how various events acting together and, in particular order, created a worldwide environment where only the toughest, most versatile of select species would carry on in a brave new world. These events, whether big or small, at their end would allow another class of creature a crack at being top dog. 300 million years ago, it was insects. 240 million years ago, the reptilian version of mammals known as the dinosaurs. Then 65 million years ago, finally mammals seized their opportunity. However, the genius behind the greed and inventions causing this global mess we're in may be one and truly short of what's required to survive it. Sounds crazy? Hurricane Katrina reduced a mighty city in one go to a concrete and steel swamp. With its inhabitants, the brainiest creatures ever not even able to rescue themselves. In our haste to acquire land as fast as possible too, for more of us, we've been unwittingly removing our planet's ability to deal with these harmful gases. In simple language, our bush, rainforests, and wetlands. And this is exactly what's happening today. As many scientists worldwide confirm, carbon dioxide levels are rising fast in our atmosphere. Unless we reverse this inequity by returning land for bush, rainforests and wetlands to regrow, greenhouse gases will continue to build up in our atmosphere, with deadly results not seen for at least 250 million years. Not many people realize that large deposits of frozen methane hydrate surround the coasts of our continents in this very day and age. It is kept there safe and stable for now because of its depth and current ocean temperatures. This status quo only changes if sea temperatures rise between 4 or 5 degrees. So, if these deposits melt and seep through the seabed, they'll react violently with the ocean to create carbon-12 gases. If there is any doubt how a tiny amount of methane hydrate can cause massive damage to surrounding seas, let alone create many times their size in C12 gas, have a look at this. A test conducted by Gerald Dickens of Rice University, Texas. He's the one who made the connection of how carbon-12, a super greenhouse gas, can get into the atmosphere in large amounts. This helped Dr. Paul Wignall making sense of the Permian mass extinction. This was the missing piece to a puzzle of the worst mass extinction ever. In fact, the entire point of this whole show the unpredictable chain of events that are triggered by global warming. Our world was not meant to handle a single species overrunning it without serious consequences. Our careless actions have already sped up and increased global warming to unnatural levels. Proof of this is everywhere. Our melting polar ice caps, coral seas worldwide being bleached to death by warmer seas, eventually oceans will rise, reclaiming lowlands and cities in the near future. Land itself will become a very scarce commodity. Till now, Earth has never experienced an asteroid or a volcanic event capable of causing the same mass extinctions and ecosystem destruction as modern man has achieved. 
fog, weather, and killer storms, which were the exception, are now becoming the norm because of our interference in our planet. With habitats changing so much from rising air and sea temperatures, the loss of life, it's starting to resemble the mother of all extinctions. Even in the most severe instance, as long as Earth has had some amount of surviving plant life to aid in its recovery, our world, with its animals, would bounce back time and again. Yes, it is these elements that have been instrumental in allowing our world to heal itself time and again recovering from some of the worst mass extinctions ever experienced. And therein lies the problem. Whereas before in Earth's history, uh, whether it be the volcanic event 250 million years ago or the asteroid 65 million years ago, there was a period where Earth was allowed time to recuperate, to replace all those elements needed to heal our planet. But now, mankind has been systematically removing those elements vital to heal our world. So this time, Earth is heating up far faster. Even it catches our own scientists off guard with the speed that everything is happening. Luckily, our planet has an ingenious and wonderful version of our immunity and antibody systems called rainforests, scrub and wetlands. Our very own air replacement and filtration systems. I use terms like antibodies or immune systems to describe our world because it is like a gigantic living organism subject to the same laws governing illness, injury, even recovery. Understanding this, one realizes how something so tiny and insignificant like people can devastate something so huge like a planet. Hard to believe? Well, the flu or a single cancerous cell it can't be seen without a microscope, yet, if unchecked, can cripple, even kill its host many, many million times bigger. So is it really so hard for some people to understand while we, mankind, are minuscule in relation to Earth, are well and truly capable of bringing the planet to its knees? by overrunning and destroying what took hundreds of millions of years for this world to develop. The fine balance of ecosystems and environments needed to create and sustain life for the marathon. Thank you for joining me on this real eye-opener. You know, I guess there's no better way for us to know what Earth has in store for us than to study its history. I can't think of the person who said this next quote, but it certainly applies. The surest way to have history repeat itself is to ignore it ever happened. On that note, I'd like to bid you farewell. From the Bureau of Reporting Unusual Current Events, I have been your host, Bruce. Cheerio.